So, we won't be making a lot at this desk today, um, but what we will be making is uh, something on this computer. So, let's switch camera angles. And we are going to go to a website where you can make your own 3D designs. Uh, it's called Tinkercad. There we go. Some of you might have worked it out already. Um, we're going to be making the interiors for these, uh, this coach. Um, I'm going to be 3D printing some seats and I'm going to go one step further and I'm going to print out some luggage racks as well. So let's see, this is going to have the full Monty basically. <laughs> um, so what have I designed here? Well, I've designed quite a crude um, luggage rack. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's quite inaccurate. Let's load it up, please load up. <laughs> yes, I'm pretty sure it's, it's inaccurate, but that's okay. I'm not terribly fussed about that. Um, I think it's sort of impressive in itself when a kit-built model has an interior full stop let alone it be 100% accurate or not. So there's our luggage rack. Um, it's going to be a lot smaller in real life. <laughs> um, let's go back. The other thing is the seats. Now I've got third class seats. Let's show you the third class seats. There we go. Here's some I made earlier. Oh, it's still loading. But yes, you see the idea. The uh, first class seats as well. Ta da! Now, the cool thing about the third class seats, I decided to add some armrests, and uh, I've also got some little cushions on the side. They look very modern on the computer, but when you print them out and once they're painted, it's really the colour from a distance that will um, help it fit in with the coach. Now, um, let's move on to the next thing. Right, so we're ready to print. Um, I've just got to send this to the USB stick. Export. Um, whilst I'm exporting that, I'm going to show you a very useful resource. Um, uh, London North Western Railway Society. They have the details of all sorts of carriages, uh, obviously, from that railway. And I managed to find the exact ones that uh, I'm assembling. Tells you all of these details. Let me zoom in on that for you. Should, should be able to see that clearly, but they tell you the, the diagram, the number of wheels, the yeah, bogey vehicle, details like that, passenger doors. Um, but here's the thing that I found really useful. They give you an interior layout now this is a, a composite coach and I managed to, I wasn't too sure where the first class went. Now I know that it is first class, first class, third class, lab, third class, third class, third class. Which um, the instructions didn't explicitly tell me, so that is very useful actually. And so it's printer time. Check out this printer.
Ta-da! Well, as you can see, um, these are all printed out, and they're really tiny. Like, seriously, look at how fine that is. Those, that is the uh, luggage rack. And I've also got one of the first class seats. Absolutely tiny. I hope it's focusing. But yes, very tiny. <laughs> the total build time was about two and a half hours. But then I like to give extra time for the layers of uh, UV liquid to cure. Uh, most people do it at about seven seconds per layer. I put it right up to ten. But the result is a very solid uh, <laughs> uh, finish like this and uh, it's less likely to go wrong. Now unlike other 3D printers, you might have noticed this, there's no there aren't really horizontal lines for each layer, you can't see them. The layers are so thin and fine. The only lines that you can see um, that are like 3D printing lines, uh, those, are, those are a result of the low resolution of the uh, UV light plate at the bottom. That's the thing that um, uh, gives off light in specific shapes. Uh, to produce each layer um, at any one time. Uh, the lines come from a lack of um, high resolution because I've got a relatively cheap printer. Anyway, enough waffle. I am going to prime all of these and we're going to look into what colors um, will paint these as well because that was something that I had to do a little bit of research on. Okay, we're 90% of the way there, painting interior-wise. In a second, I will clap and you will see this in, all installed into the railway carriage, just like this. Okay, well that didn't work. Oh yeah, I've forgotten something. These luggage racks, I've got to highlight the edges um, uh, with a sort of metallic colour. Found this dazzling metallic bronze. So use that. Cue the time lapse. Oh wait, I don't need a time lapse because here's one I made earlier. Um, so uh, the black paint is still drying, so I'll have to um, do a couple of edits, and you'll see those painted up as well. But this is what it looks like finished, and I'm going to use these ones that I've already made to show you what it looks like inside the carriage. Say hello to third class. And first class. The bit's uh, only blue tacked on for now because I'm going to see if I can add any more detail on the walls as well. But that's something for the next part. I'd like to give credit to, I think it's web compound on RM Web, who told me uh, exactly what the colours um, are in LNWR coaches and basically they changed a fair bit in the 1900s, early nine, late 1900s to early 1910s. Uh, this was the colour of the seats up until about 1908 and then they started to be phased out. Um, but yes, there you go. In part six, we'll be doing some more painting of the coach sides. Now, that is more painting, so that means it's going to take a lot more time uh, to do enough stuff that's in, uh, worth making a video about. So stay tuned for next Friday uh, at six o'clock again, 
uh, when I should bring out part five. No, this is part five. Part six. Goodbye. <laughs>